Welcome to another episode of Blooms for You here at Ninja Orchids. I so appreciate that you clicked on this video. Thank you very, very much. I get to do another one of these episodes where I can personally thank the names that have come up on the list by dedicating blooms to you so that you know that you have been seen, recognized, and that you are appreciated. If you've never commented on my channel before and you would like a bloom dedication sometime in the future, leave me a comment, let me know you're here and consider yourself welcome. If you have subscribed and you happen to have a private account, I much respect that. No need to let me know you've subscribed. Also, just leave me a comment. At least I know that you're here. I can only identify accounts that are open to the public. Those go on my list as well. And I feel as though some people may be missing out simply because they want to remain private. So let me know that you're here in general. <laughs> really appreciate the fact that you are. This is a channel that works for you. Video requests, etc. Your trust and faith in me to answer your questions, be it by a video or simply in the comments section is so much appreciated as is your time spent watching my videos and leaving a comment. The blooms that I grow and cultivate to the best of my ability down here in southern Spain, they are not only just a joy for me, but they are my means to say thank you. This being one of those episodes and some gorgeous blooms have opened up, thankfully, considering the nightmare of a spring that my orchids had to deal with. What you see here today is Vanda Denisoniana. This beautiful orchid, even though I abused her in 2021, has blessed me with some of the most gorgeously fragrant blooms that permeate the west side of my patio where she lives to such a degree that I would like to have something along the lines of lemon sugar cake. It's just delicious, especially now, and that's why I'm filming late afternoon, because now her fragrance is really, really intense. Amazing. What you see in the viewfinder is not her true colors. She looks a little bit more on the beige yellowy end of things. She's actually more on the chartreuse yellow side of the hues around the petals and the sepals. And the lip as well isn't as yellow beige as what you see here. Everything is a little bit more white, a little bit more washed out. Not so defined in the difference between the colors. But one thing is for sure, what is not washed out is that fragrance. Anyway, you can see that I am super grateful to have my Denisoniana in bloom. And for that reason, this Denisoniana is dedicated to everybody that is not mentioned in this video today. You've clicked on the video. You've spent some time on my channel. Thank you very, very much for your support. It is very much appreciated. This is a constant theme for this episode is to say thank you to show my appreciation for your support. And for everybody that is not mentioned in this episode today, this spike of the Van der Denisoniana, it blooms for you to say thank you to you. I don't want to leave anybody out. Now, let's go and leave Van der Denisoniana for now. We'll get back to her a little bit later, but let's go and see what else has opened up and whose names have come up on the list. My surprise spike of Renanthera citrina. Hey, <laughs> I say surprise because <laughs> we have had some issues with illumination early on in the season. While this orchid started her spike, and for that reason, there is no branching this year. I am not going to be greedy, although as an orchid grower, more would be better, you know? <laughs> But at least I have some blooms that I can dedicate to Charles McKemi, Belleza de mi cultura maya, Pondoc Kiene, Enjoy Home Cooking, and Lucia Vaz. The old adage is something is better than nothing, right? And this something is much, much more generous than I could have ever wished for. Considering her circumstances in the months during the spike formation, also with all the drafts indoors where this spike was forming and blooming out, there was a lot of drafts. I was expecting bud blast left, right, and center, but nope. Renanthera citrina delivers with her gorgeous little blooms of yellow, little carnival atmosphere going on in this spike, all the little dotting lip detail, which is super intricate. The closer you go in, I cannot be more grateful for this spike that I have it to once again say thank you so much, Charles McKemi, Belleza de mi cultura maya, Pondoc Kiene, Enjoy home cooking and Luciana Vaz. This spike of Renanthera citrina, it blooms for you. Massive, massive thank you. Also, muchas gracias. 
from southern Spain to all of you. I really appreciate your support here on my channel and I hope that you are all doing well in your part of the world. Oh, and P.S. Unfortunately, Renanthra Citrina is not fragrant. So the name is not a reflection of any sort of citrus fragrance. It is more a reflection of a lemon in itself. And well, very fitting. A little bit of a citrusy fragrance would really knock this orchid out of the park. And with that little add-on, Charles McKemi, Belleza de mi cultura maya, Pondo Kiene, enjoy home cooking, Luciana Vaz. Once again, I say thank you. Muchas gracias. You are so very, very much appreciated. The cheeky smiles are back. <laughs> Phalaenopsis cornucervi variety Chatalade. Lovingly called Lady Chatterley here in my collection. Just because the whole thing just takes so long, it is a mouthful. Her first three blooms are open. The first beautiful, rich sugar fragrance with a hint of plastic. <laughs> Very befitting for the aspect of these blooms. They look Fake. They look waxy, so there is a plastic note in the rest of the sugar fragrance, but her name is just a mouthful. And because she makes me smile and giggle, I call her Lady Chatterley. So, Lady Chatterley blooms for Sean Clestine, Deborah Lach, international chef Tonit Oka. Thank you to the three of you very, very much for your support on my channel. I was hoping to have the next two buds open as well so I could make a longer dedication, get to a few more names, but they're taking their sweet time and I do not want to lose these blooms and miss out because the temperatures are warming up, meaning longevity of blooms is going to decline. But she seems to be very busy, got lots more coming. I love how these buds are just like little orbs, like little berries you just want to pop off some kind of a spring summer berry, you know, and have it with your ice cream. <laughs> but no, we do not want to pop off any of these buds. She has had some mealybug challenges during the early stage of developing these blooms, dealt with those very, very quickly with some garlic alcohol. But you know, it's nothing unusual with this orchid. For some reason, even though while she's inside, she is not outside yet, this orchid just brings on the crawlers and I can't stand it because they're so tiny. And if I don't look very, very closely, including with my phone to see if I can see anything, I wouldn't see the mealybugs on this orchid. I do love this orchid though, because of her cheerful aspect in the blooms. I will never ever get over repeating myself in showing you that I see a hard hat, I see two eyes, and I see a smile with the white teeth, McLean's. At least that was the toothpaste of choice in Kenya. Looking back on those days, it would appear that was the only toothpaste that could afford to pay for advertising on television, but that's what I see here, a McLean smile. Gorgeous little orchid. So once again, I would like to say thank you to Sean Clestine, Deborah Lach, and international chef Tonitz Oka. I hope you're all doing very well in your part of the world. If you're enjoying spring, I hope it's a good one. If you're enjoying fall, I also hope it's a good one. Either way, make sure you stay safe. And once again, thank you for being here. Here is my lily of the valley orchidios. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Doesn't she look like lily of the valley? Well, this is Aria hyacinthoides. And I'm hoping I can do these delicate blooms justice because huh, getting in close and documenting their structure and the texture that they have is just like eating ice cream in the summer sun, expecting it not to melt. It's impossible. These blooms are so, so tiny, very, very delicate. They have no fragrance. But what charms me about this orchid is the fact that she looks like a giant oversized lily of the valley plant and not necessarily an orchid. Anyway, I'm getting carried away once again. The two spikes of my Eria hyacinthoides, they bloom for Bob Gromer and Orchidario di Vetro. So thank you to the two of you very, very much. I know that this would appear to be a puny little blooming, but the fact that she does bloom is very, very important because my conditions here in southern Spain is something she would prefer to do without. I don't have enough humidity, and that is why my blooms are not lasting very, very long. 
they never have but she will bloom again on other new growths there's a little bit of a succession with this one i've only ever had a one-off where all the spikes came out in one go and then she looked pretty impressive. You could think that you would see her on the forest floor and you would be forgiven if you thought it was a very, very well cultivated lily of the valley. <laughs> Seeing that this is my only area, I have no experience with any others, but I would consider her a terrestrial, semi-terrestrial orchid. When it comes time to repot her, we will analyze her a little bit closer because she certainly does not have the characteristics of an epiphyte. That's for sure. I was also told to be grateful that my area doesn't have a fragrance because apparently one should not be fooled by the delicate blooms because they can be quite uh, off-putting in their fragrance. And I was like very surprised by that. You see, the reason I bought this orchid was because of her name, Hyacinthoides. And I love the fragrance of hyacinths. So if you were to see that name and you like that fragrance and you see it in an orchid, you're like, yep, I'm having me some of that, right? Right wrong no fragrance whatsoever meanwhile while i'm standing here behind me i've got the blooming dendrobium unicum and i can smell that fragrance that's for sure incredible how that dendrobium unicum is permeating the air but anyway i digress one more time thank you so very very much bob gromer and Orchidario di Vetro for your support on my channel the first two spikes of my area hyacinthoides they bloom for you Really appreciate that you're here and very grateful for your support. One of the oldest Phalaenopsis in my collection is my Phalaenopsis Leodoro Sweet Memory and well, I don't have a big spectacle this year, but the three blooms that I have are a spectacle in themselves. And the third bloom has just opened, which I really want to dedicate to Surya Khmer. Surya, thank you so much for being here on my channel, for supporting me. I hope that you're doing well. Know that I appreciate you very, very much. And for me, a very special bloom blooms for you here in southern Spain, Surya Khmer. If nothing else, to get three blooms out of this orchid on the spike that she developed throughout the winter with very, very limited light, I consider that a blessing. I know that I have probably another chance up here from a spike from last year that branched during the winter, so that's a branch that developed. But I'm not going to hold out hope. This orchid has been through orchid hell. And if I were her, I would have just said, look, lady, forget it. Are you kidding me? No blooms for you. So the three that we see, the one that has just opened recently, Surya Khmer, these are a gift. And I'm so happy to pay this forward to you for your support on my channel. You are so very, very much appreciated. I find that with every new spike a sweet memory develops, the blooms are bigger. What I've noticed over the years when it comes to this Leodora sweet memory, she used to have four or five spikes on her, and then one year I just cut them all off saying, okay, no more of this, relax, rest, and grow me a new one if you so decide. And then that one year when she grew me two new spikes during the winter, the blooms show the size of the blooms, the fragrance, everything was so much more intense than when I had her with four or five spikes. And they all did bloom because she got a lot more light back then during the winter. So it kind of doesn't surprise me that the winter spikes didn't bloom. I'm just surprised that she did bloom and still produced sizable blooms as well and very, very fragrant, a whole handful of skittles all in one go into your mouth and then that aroma that permeates through your mouth and through your nose that is her fragrance with three blooms it's divine so being grateful for the small things is an understatement here i am grateful for the big ones as well Surya Khmer my Balanopsis Leodoro sweet memory she blooms for you on her third bloom thank you so much for your support on my channel Really quickly, I'm going to scoot the information into the beginning of this clip because if this tolumnia moves again, you see, just like that, 
<laughs> I don't know, is she going to come back and grace us with her blooms again? This has been happening for the last five minutes, and that is why I started the clip out the way I did. Okay, <laughs> I just had to share that with you. Let's try this again. Let's bring her back. She's in her basket. There's not that much wind here. It really isn't that difficult, but let me just hold the basket still for once because I think we can do this indefinitely. The color of the blooms right now is pure. This is exactly the color that she has in real life. So the viewfinder is picking it up. And that is why I've got her hanging here. And we're going to have a little bit of a dodgem kind of <laughs> Tolumnia dedication. <laughs> because I could showcase the color here. The photography in my ninja clip didn't quite do it justice. But let me just get the names out and whoa be able to say thank you so much to CT Cat Fur and Gone With Natural Beauty. There she goes again, ah, every time I let go. But if I turn the basket around the other way, she does exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter how I position the hook. <laughs> Tolumnia with a mind of her own, like here today and then like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Something along those lines. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to make light of a dedication because I really, really do take this seriously. And everybody means so much to me that subscribes, that I can identify, and that comments. And if that is a new name, it goes on the list. So, CT Cat Fur and Gone With Natural Beauty, please do not think I'm not taking this dedication to say thank you to you, seriously. Nothing could be further from the truth. I just like the fact that right here, I can show her true colors. By the way, did I mention Tulumnia Red Sun, according to my label? Tolumnia red berry. So I don't know, maybe it's a first time bloomer and for that reason I don't have the details for a red sun as Michael McCarthy pointed out, but still she is gorgeous and that's why we are doing it this way. So thank you very, very much. CT cat fur, will you hold still? <laughs> CT cat fur and gone with natural beauty for your support on my channel. My somewhat camera shy Tolumnia red sun, whoa, she blooms for you. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. And I'm just holding on to see how long she would stay in shot while I finish the clip because that would be a novel thing, wouldn't it? The moment I hit the pause button, she would be right back in the viewfinder. But nope, <laughs> she is true to form. She refuses to stay in focus. Anyway, thank you to the two of you so very much. My second Leptotus bicolor. I have five blooms to give to Douglas E. Knapp, Colin Salvage, and Maria Elena Delgado to say thank you to the three of you for supporting me here on my channel. Really, really appreciate it. Unfortunately, the first flush of blooms that this orchid produced, it was impossible to film. The conditions, the wind, it was a real dud time period. Unfortunately, I also filmed indoors trying to see if I can't dedicate those blooms. It didn't look right. It was just, well, I missed out, unfortunately, to say thank you to more people via my Leptotus bicolor because she had another four blooms before these ones opened. And then while these ones were finishing opening, she already, whoops, dumped a bloom back here. So we would have had six. Would have, could have, should have. That should not take away from these five blooms that are absolutely gorgeous. I'm very, very happy to have these blooms, especially because I do want to say thank you to Douglas E. Knapp, Colin Salvage, and Maria Elena Delgado. Now, what I've noticed, because I've got two Leptotis by colors, what I've noticed with my other one, the blooms are much, much larger. This orchid in her own right is not a first time bloomer. Before she arrived in my collection, I can see spent flower spikes in the back. So it's possible that they are a little bit smaller because it's a first time bloomer for me in my collection after her acclimating process, after her transition into inorganic media. It may well be that is why the blooms are smaller and also she is not fragrant as opposed to my other one that is fragrant. But I do see how common the blooms are between the one that I have and this one is the fact that the blooms are all over the place. Even without moving this orchid from her location where she was forming these blooms and the previous ones indoors, you've got one that's upside down, you've got one that's perfectly straight, 
You've got another one that's a little bit lopsided, but just so happens on the same spike, the neighboring bloom is perfectly straight. She's all over the place. But for photography purposes, all this lopsidedness gives for some very interesting angles and peaks into the structure of the blooms without having to do some kind of acrobatic distortions of one's body. <laughs> to describe some of the positions I have to take in order to photograph blooms. <laughs> but once again, thank you so much, Douglas E. Knapp, Colin Salvage, Maria Elena Delgado, for your support on my channel. My Leptotis Bicolor, she blooms for you. Hope that you are all doing well in your part of the world. This makes me so happy. <laughs> this is Phalaenopsis speciosa crossed with Violacea, and it just makes me so happy to have one bloom. One bloom is all I need to be able to say thank you to another name on my list and my speciosa crossed with Violacea blooms from Marley Verster. So I hope, Marley Verster, that you like summer blooming Phalaenopsis and that you are not put off by Phalaenopsis as. I can understand some orchid growers are. This gorgeous bloom deserves a name and a thank you behind her. And it just so happens, Marley Bersta, your name came up. And let me tell you, if you're not sold on how cute she is and the fact that she is a Phalaenopsis, may I tell you about her fragrance? Beautiful, just like the Phalaenopsis Leodora Sweet Memory, but more intense than that. So this single bloom is much more fragrant than the sweet memory that I have that is currently blooming with three blooms. Incredible. She has a cinnamon sugary fragrance, but with fruity pebbles in the notes as well. So she's just like a fruit punch with a hint of cinnamon in it. It is very potent, very evident to the nose. And she's not even exposed to any sunlight where she lives and she overpowers the Leodoro sweet memory. And nothing, nothing can make me not get convinced at how cute that fuzzy, fuzzy lip is. Let me point you into the direction of a series I'm doing this summer, and that is Blooms or Orchids in the Dark, where orchids that are in bloom are featured under flashlight. And we can look and see about the structures and textures in a different context, so to speak. But I don't know if that video will have already aired by the time this clip comes out. But if it hasn't, or you haven't seen it, when it does air, I will link that video in the description below. Because what I saw with a flash on, that was just something completely out of this world. Gorgeous and mesmerizing. She is beautiful during the day. She is beautiful under the flash. It's just an amazing little bloom. And here is me trying to sell this gorgeous bloom to <laughs> Marley Berster to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I really do hope you see this video. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that you like the Speciosa crossed with Violacea. Orange is the new black, <laughs> but Dendrobium unicum is the one in the spotlight this time around. And before I really get carried away about this orchid, let me put the names out there to whom these six blooms are dedicated to. Gartha Africana, Taming the Orchid, and La Quazza Bicicleta. Thank you very, very much for your support on my channel, Dendrobium unicum. She blooms for you this season. Well, let me just tell you about her fragrance while you digest your names if you are watching this video. How about, do you remember when back in the day Fanta Orange, the bottle itself was actually really, really orange and not this mediocre washed out orange that we see this day and age. The content of the Fanta Orange came through the clear bottle as deep orange, pretty much reflecting this color that we see here on the blooms. That was back in the olden days, let's just say for my generation, late 60s and into the 70s. That Fanta orange was one of my favorite, favorite drinks. And luckily here in Spain, when I moved to Spain back in the 80s, they were still selling that for me original Fanta orange before they went on to this washed out Fanta orange that we know today. 
color wise but that original fanta orange is the exact fragrance of this orchid now i have mentioned many many times before that it is possible that the brain sees a certain color and boom you know subconscious memory muscles <laughs> they sort of creep up and then you experience a fragrance that your brain associates with that color that is very very possible i do not have any scientific evidence to base that on that is just my personal experience because it seems like when i see certain colors my brain just goes yep that's the fragrance but i'm telling you it is there the original deep orange fanta orange flavor is the fragrance of this orchid and i cannot tell you how many times i stand in my blooming alley and just sniff <laughs> anybody watching who does not understand what the orchid hobby is about would be concerned and probably call authorities <laughs> straight jacket for this one but hey standing next to this orchid while in the blooming alley the fragrance is very evident there is no two ways about it it is somewhat faint but it is in the air normally this orchid blooms at the same time with my dendrobium victoria regina unfortunately this year that is not the case however i don't think we're going to miss out on victoria regina blooms here at ninja orchids i have a feeling something is on the move at the end of the canes it's just that this year they didn't quite sync up at the same time and i do believe that is because of our very very cold miserable and dark spring which the victoria regina absolutely loved and thrived under but it postponed her blooms that is my best guess anyway i'm getting so carried away because the two colors that beautiful purple blue of the victoria regina contrasting to this rich gorgeous orange of a dendrobium unicum the two of them together they just work so well and unfortunately i kind of miss that visual aspect but one shouldn't think of what ifs one should live in the moment especially with blooms that are like these the detail is astounding i like big lips this i can't deny and all that fun stuff comes into my mind the curliness of the sepals it's a mess it's a gorgeous mess it just makes you want to dig into an orange sorbet where the orange rind has been scraped off and turned into a gorgeous sugary curl as a decoration on the top of your orange sorbet this orchid triggers all the senses in me taste visual inspiration the fragrance the nose this orchid just has it all and you know what she's not even that big of an orchid to have this big of an impact on your senses so if you are limited for space let me just say get yourself a dendrobium unicum because she will not outgrow your space but she will bless you with something so beautiful once a year lasting about two weeks depending on temperature and the conditions if you as in my case are growing outside she will last for about two weeks but wow well well worth it so now you can see that is why i dove straight in with the names to say thank you to gartha africana taming the orchid and la quatza bicicleta for your support on my channel here simply because i wanted to just yap away and get on with talking about this orchid and showing you some of the photography that i've taken in the past days dendrobium unicum a very special orchid to me and that's why i can't stop yapping she blooms for you as a massive muchas gracias thank you very much y a santa sana for your support on my channel The sun has now disappeared beyond the hedge, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. She still has a bronze yellowy hue to her, whereas it is not that defined. But my goodness, it was a pleasure to have her hanging here on my trellis because I can smell her all the way into the living room. Normally she's on the west side where she gets the maximum amount of light during the day. But late afternoon, early evening, I actually hang her onto this trellis once my curtain can go up because that fragrance permeates into the living room, believe it or not. It is divine, delicious, and just 
delightful. If you've made it to the end of the video, once again, thank you very much. It was a little bit longer than I normally like to do these blooms for you dedications. I don't want to waste anybody's time, but there are some orchids that just warrant a little more explanation and detail and well, me just geeking out over them. So <laughs> your time is appreciated. Thank you for letting me do that. I hope you all have a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe. Vanda Denisoniana, she blooms for you. Take care. Bye.